Hey guys, all right, all right. We'll get started here in just a second. Check my, there we go. Appreciate everybody being here. We'll get uh, started here in just a second. As we get started, I just bought this book. Um, I just got it. I haven't read it yet, uh, but I linked up with this guy on uh, on LinkedIn. This is the book, The Essential Retirement Guide, A Contrarian's Perspective. And the author, and let's see, just let me know you can hear me if you would. Um, the author... There you go. Is a guy named uh, Frederick Vitiz or Vitize, something like that, who's the chief actuary of uh, Morneau Chappelle, one of the largest human resources consulting company uh, in Amer in uh, Canada. No, this no, nah, this is my this is just a regular cup. This is not a Christmas cup, uh, Starling. It's just a regular one. My wife uses more Christmas cups. I just uh, I'll get one. Uh, especially made for the YouTube channel at some point. I need a haircut. Anyway, it's interesting because uh, what old Frederick says is that most people never spend more than 50% of their gross income, right on, Starling, uh, uh, on themselves before retirement. Hey, hence their retirement income target is usually much, much less than 70%. Hey, Tom, thanks for being there, man, spectator. Daniel, right on, right on. We got brother, Matt Burns. So most people never spend more than 50% of their gross income on their selves. Hey, Pittsburgh. Thus, their retirement income is usually much less than 70%. I mean, I could not agree with that more. Even in this low interest rate environment, old Frederick says, you can withdraw 5% of your more of your retirement savings each year in retirement without running out of money. Your spending in retirement will almost certainly go down as decline at eight as you age, so you may not need to save as much as you think. Wow, sounds exactly like someone else was saying. As people reach the later stages of retirement, they become less capable of managing their finances, even though they grow more confident in their ability to do so. Plan for, for this before it's too late. So anyway... Is this book, and I'll put a link in the show notes, The Essential Retirement Guide, A, Contr a Guide, A Contrarian's uh, Perspective. And uh, I can't wait to read this. He had just written another one, um, Real Retirement, a book that explained why Canada, this is a 2012, a book that explained why Canada was not suffering a retirement crisis. So very much looking forward to reading this right there. So I got that on the shelf. Um Let's see what else. I, oh, and then we got to talk about my course too, for sure. Um, hey, you got bro. I don't know if you saw the game. I mean, I was watching a little bit of the uh, Steelers game today, and uh, it looked like they were going to lose because they called this stupid late hit penalty on the uh, on uh, what's it? What's the name? Uh, Mayfield, and uh, <laughs> and, I, and I said, man, freaking! I, I cannot believe how bad the quarterbacks are getting protected nowadays. I mean, there's no way this is a penalty. It's a 15-yard automatic first down penalty with less than two minutes in the game. That, well, I don't want to say thankfully because I hate the Steelers, but Mayfield proceeded to throw a pick the very next play. Stupid, but 
there would have been riots in Pittsburgh and Rob would have been there to riot in the street um, because of the bad calls on the, uh, the rest for sure. Matt says, experts say you should be out of the market five years prior to retirement. Uh, who's the experts that says that, man? Um, yeah, I, uh, I, I, <laughs> Matt, I would disagree with that wholeheartedly for sure. I, 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 Frank, the expert stuff, that, who is an expert? I mean, who? who? I mean, the, the idea that we have any kind of expert on future um, is, in my opinion, no, I'm not saying this towards you. I'm just saying, that, hey, Marie, right on. Marie's usually running late, so she's here a little bit on time. You don't get a tardy slip today, Marie. That's what happens when you live in PA. You're too engulfed in the Pittsburgh Steelers. You're like, oh, I, I, I can, you know, come on at my time. But anyway, um, yeah, from Texas, right on, Ben. I just, I don't care what experts say because remember, an expert is what exactly? It's someone who has looked at potentially the uh, the data of uh, of numbers and they project that data into the future. Well, freaking, I wouldn't trust that as far as I could kick it because like Paul Samuelson said, who was one of the, uh, an MIT economist who kind of charted the way of economics being more of a uh, philosophical uh, arrangement on how individuals act, their behavior and whatnot, almost a psychological philosophical thing revolving around everyday decisions to a mathematic concept of what we would call, what I call physics envy. Uh, so I, I'm not a big fan of Paul Samuelson, but at, in fact, Paul Samuelson, the expert, predicted in 1989 that the Soviet Union was going to overtake the U.S. economy in five to ten years. This is Paul Samuelson. Uh, yeah, uh, what happened? Literally 1989. So I, I, I can I don't take them with any grain of salt at all because an expert said, how are you going to predict anything? Anyway, what Samuelson is that he said is. Economists have predicted four of the last seven, seven, the economists have predicted 17 of the last four recessions. Um, what Milton Friedman or somebody said about uh, uh, economy, let me read this, wait, hold on a second, I got to look at this quote, this is funny, All right, hold on a second, uh, economics, economist, yeah, let's see, hold on just a second. Uh, economist, who said this? Economists make astrologers look respectable. That's what uh, I forgot who the guy was who said the whole in just a second. I'm going to find it. Economists make ast astrologers look respectable. Uh, Galbraith. Uh, yeah, that was John Kenneth Galbraith, another guy who <laughs> was one of the, uh, you know, the, almost like a Keynesian types. But anyway, uh, late Harvard professor John Kenneth Galbraith, who is realistic about his fellow economists. One of his most famous quips was in the 1970s, the only function of economic forecasting is to make astrology look respectable. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, who's an expert, actually? But, uh, I mean, check in from, we got, hey, Alan Williams, right on. Jeff Rain says Steelers, even though Jeff is from, uh, North, is living in North Carolina. Just when you grew up in the 70s, you're going to be a Steelers or probably Raiders fan, actually. Let's be or Cowboys, Steelers, Raiders, or Cowboys, if you grew up in the 70s. I mean, that was the uh, the dominant team. I, I, Minnesota was too small. I mean, I guess the Vikings played a number of Super Bowls. They played four Super Bowls in the 70s. Um, but it's the Steelers, the Cowboys, and who? anyone else in the NFC? I'm trying to think. And the Redskins, not much. The Eagles didn't do much. The Vikings, the beginning of the decade. Other than that, it's pretty much the Cowboys and Cowboys only that I can think about. Hey, Vic, I see Western New York says hi. Theo in Dallas, Fort Worth says howdy. Uh, John W. says uh, economists believe in economy change instead of economy warming or economy cooling. In any case, they're always right. <laughs> exactly right, John. Five years of cash sounds more like I, I, I could a yeah, good point, Sergio. So going back to what Matt said. Uh, Matt Burns says experts say you should be out of the market five years prior to retirement. I, I think they're actually what uh, – what Sergio was saying is that uh, uh, five years of cash sounds more like I, I agree with that 100% for sure. All right. So uh, a couple of y'all have bought my course, much obliged. Um, and that's fantastic. So I just want to show you just real quick. Um, I, I didn't make it very clear. So just what I got on the live screen, that uh, screen live stream here. Um, the, oops, hold on just a second. Actually, before we get started, let me, let me, I, just, I want to knock off a couple of Q and A's that I've had. Um, 
I can't remember if I answer this or not, but uh, actually, hold on just a second. Um, Q and A's I got right here. Okay. Uh, oh no. Okay. So this guy just sent me a calculator from uh, this guy. Sent me a calculator from HorizonBank.com, which is Roth conversion. Uh, DinkyTown.net. DinkyTown.net. So we can um, go there. That has all the awesome, awesome calculators. Let me just go to DinkyTown. DinkyTown.net. I just want to share. Um, hold on a second. I'll share with you. Hit share right there. And we're going to share the screen. So, yeah, okay, sweet. Uh, DinkyTown.net, just tons of great calculators on here. I'm just, uh, just, it's, if you're looking for calculators, this is it. And I was looking at the tax calculators, um, 1040 tax calculator. I just, uh, man, just tons and tons and tons of great stuff. Actually, where was I looking at? Oh, hold on just a second. I was going to share with you this one. Oh, here, let me, uh, let me share with you this. Mortgage calculate, calculate, calculator.org right here. I want, I'm going to do a video on this tomorrow. Probably not tomorrow because I got jury duty. I keep telling myself I want to not go, like say a call on sick. My wife's like, you've got to go. I was like, yeah. Hey, all kinds of stuff on this one right here. So mortgage.calculator.org. You hit this and you go to additional, additional payment calculator. Oops, did I type something wrong? I was going to show this is going to be cool, man. Watch this. Nope. Oops. Just a second. There we go. All right, cool. There we go. All right, cool. A digit calc. Calc. Oh, this is great. All right, so I want to show you guys something. All right, so here we got. So I was messing around. I said, okay. We got $325,000 as our home value. Our loan amount is 260. We got a 4.5% interest rate. And I said, we, and let's get rid of this right here for the time being, zero and zero. I said, uh, we're gonna get rid of PMI. All right, so I said, basically make sure, okay, cool. So I said, what is our monthly payment? This is just P&I, not taxes and insurance. So we have 325, 260 is our loan amount. So you scroll down here and we have a monthly payment of 1317. And we're gonna have uh, total payments, we're gonna pay $474,000. So basically a little bit less than doubling of our mortgage that we took out. And you can see they'll amortize it. Uh, where's the amortization? Right here, show amortization schedule. Uh, hold on a second. And anyway, this is, this is crazy. I just wanna show you something. So I get this question a lot actually. I think about it myself too. Yeah, here we go. So here's the amortization schedule right here. So you can see the interest, you know, we're paying significantly more interest than we are to principal, significantly more interest than we are to principal until we get way down where you're starting to pay more principal than interest. But what happens if you dump in, you know, one-time payment of $50,000? So we're going to dump in a one-time payment of 50,000 bucks. Say you got a mortgage a bonus or something like that. And we're going to do that in January, 2020. Wow, this is crazy. Why wow. uh, this calculator is fantastic, and it'll calculate it all right here for you. Watch this. You save one hundred and two thousand dollars of interest. Of interest, you save one hundred and two thousand dollars of interest just by dumping in the extra fifty thousand bucks. And so, I mean, just it's insane how much interest you save. So here, you're going to end up paying. Three hundred seventy-one thousand bucks versus four hundred seventy-four thousand dollars, and that's all interest you're saving because you're still paying the same principal. Hey, buddy, buddy, it's uh, I, I thought that's fantastic. So I'm a big fan of this mortgage calculator, and I'll put that in the show notes because um, I, I, it's, it's crazy. All right, so I, I was, uh, buddy, you're gonna kill yourself. Um, and watch out! Come, no, 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 come here, buddy. Anyway, that that was pretty cool. I, I was a big. Uh, I like that quite a bit, that mortgage calculator tool. And I'll, I'll do a video on that um, tomorrow uh, if I can. All right. Oh, buddy. All right. So math easel is neat. Um, math easel. Is that is that a uh, 
is that a website or something like that? That looks pretty cool. Uh, Texas, right? And Deb's Deb Renault from Texas. You know, she's native of Louisiana, some someplace, either her or her husband. All right. Uh, Connecticut, what's going on, Mary? All right. Bunch of Raiders fans from the 70s. Yep. Uh, grow beards almost playoff season. <laughs> not in hockey. Uh, hockey, not yet. But I will tell you, um, uh, the hockey, uh, uh, um, the Bruins are looking freaking fantastic, which scares me. Um, yeah, jury duty, exactly. Yep. All right, so East Tennessee, right on. Scooby-Doo, East Tennessee. Like I told uh, some of you all, I took a job for about three months in Kingsport, Tennessee, which is the eastern part of Tennessee, which is uh, which is wonderful, but just it's not much to do. So we didn't uh, end up move, moving there because uh, I it was freaking gorgeous. But, uh, ooh, ready, uh, my man Dana up in uh, Maine getting ready for a foot of snow. <sighs> you know what it was like out here tonight? Let me show you in Georgia. 54 degrees or 65 degrees and sunny here. Oh, man. It was nice. And Boston, already getting snow. And then Peaks Island. I'm calling for it. Remember they said uh, 10 years ago, we will the kids today will never know what snow looks like again. All right. Uh, all right, so a couple of things I'm going to jump into. So I want to show you my course here. So let's uh, let's go into this. And so two things going on, and, and I don't really care how you do it. Um, but I want to show. So we're going to go back to share. And I'm going to hit this guy. And I'm going to hit this guy here. All right. So this is my Subscribestar page. So if you go to subscribestar.com slash Josh, um, and what happens here, this is where um, you can donate a 10 bucks a month to my, my, my channel, if you will, I mean, to me. And if you do that, um, you'll get 80% off. And again, I don't, I'll probably offer this for another week. 80% off on the, um, the course I'm going to offer. 80% off on the course. So subscribestar.com slash Josh Scanlon. Um, and I'm not going to sign in right now because I just, I don't want, but if you go to subscribestar.com slash Josh Scanlon, you can get 80% off of my course. Cause I'm going to offer my course for $500 starting in one January. Uh, but that's for 10 bucks a month. You say, okay, I'm willing to donate 10 bucks a month to Josh. And because of that, I want to kind of reward those who do it would give them a, you know, a decent little, uh, reason to do so. Now I'm not going to hold you accountable. I mean, look, man, I, I don't care. If people say, well, I'm going to do this so I can get a cheap course, that's fine. I, I just literally don't care. I mean, whatever. But at the end of the day, the people who don't do it through subscribestar.com, uh, they'll get a 50% off between now and the beginning of J January. So it's 500 bucks, but it's going to be 250 at the beginning of January. So the people who are here on this live stream are, are, are pretty good, obviously, um fans of the show and i don't i literally don't mind and i'm not giving away i'm still charging you 100 bucks um but anyway at the end of the day i thought that'd be kind of a, a nice well, why is it doing that that's weird i thought that'd be kind of nice to uh i don't know to incentivize people to a join the subscribe star thing and b uh to say thank you for being here for sure uh but then again at the beginning of the year i'm gonna charge 500 bucks uh, for sure um, I'm working my next one. So now I'm going to be finishing up my uh, retire on the Wellington fund. I'm going to finish up that book. And then from then I'm going to do a course on Roth conversions. Uh, so I'm very much looking forward to that. So the Roth conversion course will be all right here. What just on the, on the, uh, the software, essentially using the right capital software, um, and maybe using some TurboTax, uh, but using the right capital software, just case study after case study, after case study, uh, the retiring on Wellington fund will be a lot of spreadsheets uh, and it's just a book I'm writing. So I'm going to do that too. So those are two things coming down the pike. Uh, both those will certainly be offered at discount, if not explicitly free to my subscribe star folks. And again, if I have a million people in subscribe star, I, I don't know how to police that up. I just don't know, but probably won't do that at that point. But anyway, just be advised. I mean, just, I could change this any day, but I can't wait to get those two books out. Uh, this course was, uh, was interesting because I put a lot of my heart and soul into it. Um, it's certainly not perfect, but I freaking love it. I'm proud of it as all can be. It's uh, I love it. Um, you know, Steve, you expect professionalism and you don't get that here. All right. So uh, you're just getting old Josh, you know, yapping on stuff. 
I, I get in front of software quite a bit. I show the social security website and all that. And I'm certainly down the basin. Um, but I'm proud of that. But it took a long time to figure out. It took a long time to get the gist of how to uh, send the record the course up through this thing called Teachable, which I'm a big fan of. Once you figure it out, it's actually easy. It took me about a week to figure that out, though. It was, I was like, man, how do we do this? How do we do that? And you know, just watch various videos and stuff. I was finally able to figure it out. Um, but I, was, I tell you, it just man, I, did, I hate to be a broken record here, but if you got a skill set and maybe you don't want to get on camera. Um, you can do the course, you know, without even having your face on camera, just talking. So let's just say there's a guy who knows social security and he's got a spreadsheet, uh, regarding social security. And this guy knows who he is. Um, and let's just say he's not as comfortable maybe on camera with his face in there as, you know, maybe he would want to be on YouTube. Well, hell man, just freaking go on. And it could be, this could be anybody by the way, but just go on teachable. And it cost, I think I paid, you know, 200 bucks, 300 bucks, the whole thing. Um, and just go on Teachable, you sign up for it, and they do everything. All you got to do is do a bunch of uh, videos on how to do your social security spreadsheet. I'm telling you right now, people will pay for that because you say, sign up for my Teachable course. I teach you all, everything you need to know about social security with a spreadsheet to go with it. And people pay for that stuff. And the reason I say it is because I get emails all the time. People want access to some social security spreadsheet. And mine was just a freaking, you know, infantile stuff. And I get all the time. I said, I just, I don't want to do that. And so it's just too much of a pain. Um, oh man. If you know spreadsheets and you can talk, you don't even have to be on camera. Just talk the English language or people can understand you, man. You can create a spreadsheet for Roth conversions. You can create a spreadsheet for social security. You can create a spreadsheet for Monte Carlos, all that stuff. People will pay you for it. And if you do the spreadsheet tutorial on Teachable, you know, charge 150 bucks. That comes with a spreadsheet and all the tutorials. I guarantee people will pay for that. It's nuts. It's so, it's freaking awesome. It's awesome. It's awesome. It's awesome. Um, on, uh, I've, I had a couple courses I paid for on, on uh, Teachable. I did one was uh, permaculture. What was that guy's name? A guy uh, in Ferguson, something Ferguson out of Louisiana, who shows you how to propagate plants. And uh, let me see if I can show it to you. Hold on a second. We got my little monkey here. Um, hold on just a second. I got, uh, I forgot his name. I know it's not Neil. It's, uh, oh, right here. And propagate plants is where you take the branch off one and tie it to another. Oh, man, it is awesome. So if I can find this here, hold on just a sec. Yeah, right here. So I got these two plant, Nick Ferguson, plant propagation course. I'm signed up for it. I paid, I think, 250 for that. And then some lady named uh, Joanna Weeby. I have copy hackers training. And if you're doing any kind of sales stuff, let me make this bigger. If you're doing any kind of sales stuff, um, you, you definitely want to have copywriting, i.e., how do you how do you write stuff to get people interested in it? I, I just I cannot stress enough how important that stuff is if you're interested in doing that kind of thing. Um, it, oh, there's so much that you could do without ever getting in front of the camera. Without it's just this, there's so much to do without question. Um, but you got to know copy basic copywriting techniques. Uh, there's a guy, uh, not Napoleon Hill. I'm drawing a blank, that guy's name. Carnegie, Dale Carnegie, How to Make Friends and Influence People. Look at his book, this guy's book, and just look at the way he titles his chapters, How to Make Friends and Influence People. It's, it's nuts. And then you look at that, and then you look at these technical people who are trying to be regular, not technical, and you're sitting there thinking, I mean, they need to read just basic copy skills because when they write no one cares and, and if no one cares no one's going to click on it even if it's the next einstein you got to get people engaged for sure so it's kind of somewhat clickbaity but that's not a negative thing all right uh all right right here so jd says josh what are your thoughts on rebalancing to keep overall fixed bond stock mix and taking monthly 401k distributions uh from which types of funds okay all right, let me think that. So what are my thoughts on rebalancing to keep overall fixed bonds stock? Well, I, mean, I don't think I can. Hold on just a second, JD. Let me unshare this here. Blink. There we go. Stop share. Yeah, sweet. Oh, I want to go. All right, I wasn't done. All right, hold on just a second. Uh, let me just. All right. What are my thoughts on rebalancing to keep overall? See, I. 
Um, I like the idea, JD, of um, I, I, I like the idea of taking from what is up and leaving what is down out. If that makes sense. So, if you have, you know, if you have, I don't know, a million bucks and you need forty thousand dollars, and just for simply uh, simplicity, you have, you know, five hundred thousand in bonds and five hundred thousand in stocks, and the stocks are up twenty percent, so the stocks are up uh, to six hundred thousand dollars. And you need forty thousand. I, I would pull it from the stocks and not rebalance. I, if that makes sense, I, I just I find it to be. I find the rebalancing thing is way too complicated, and most people won't do it anyway. But I think if you say, all right, you start the beginning of the year with you know five hundred thirty-three thousand here, four hundred thirty-three thousand there. What is ever up the most percentage-wise? That's where I'm going to pull my money from. If that makes sense. Um, and that's just a simple way to kind of do somewhat of rebalancing. But the problem is when you have different accounts, you have different percentages, it just doesn't get done. It doesn't. And so that's why I just, I think the rebalancing, that's what, one of the benefits of, you know, hiring a robo advisor or something like that, or hiring a financial advisor is they can do it with click button, you know, investment management. Uh, but I don't think it's worth the 1%. I don't. And you know, you hear investment people say all the time, rebalancing is the only free lunch in investing. I, I don't believe that to be true because I don't literally believe that many people do it. And I don't know if there's a, there's no, what, what's the most optimal time? Should I rebalance now? Should I wait till market crash? Should I wait till, I, we don't know. So for me, I think just keep it simple. I have this amount in this portfolio, this amount in that portfolio. At the end of the day, which one's up, pull from that. You know, just take your gains, take your gains. Um, now, other people say, you know, you ride your winners and you sell your losers. And I get that when it comes to an individual security. I have Amazon or I have GE. My GE is getting crushed, my Amazon going up, so I'm going to sell my GE and let my Amazon go. That'd be Meb Faber and the momentum crowd. And I, I look, I got no qualm with that when it comes to one specific security, either a specific ETF or a specific stock. When it comes to a broad portfolio of stocks versus bonds versus cash, I, I don't think you, I, I just, I don't think that makes any sense. I think you just say, look, stocks are up. Let me take some gains off the table. Bonds are up. Let me take some gains off the table. If stocks got crushed. I hope that makes sense. Uh, tell that. What's going on in Michigan? Right on, right on. Good to see you. Mike C is going to Southern California next weekend. It's supposed to rain all three days. Well, they could use it for sure. Uh, David says the right to a jury of one's peers was one of the most important things in the Constitution. Uh, it's worth participating. Yeah, I, no, I get it, David. It might, I, look, man, I, as I said before many times, I go in there and I'm going to, to get, let's see, to get out of it, I could say, let's see, I could say I'm a member of a right wing militia, or I could say I'm a member of a uh, communist hippie movement. I could say that, one of those two things. But again, I always defer to the uh, accused as opposed to the prosecution. So just as you attorneys out there, I am not a fan of prosecutors, not in the least. That doesn't mean they're evil people if I'm sitting around the Thanksgiving table watching the Pats. But it does mean I, I find the prosecution has all the cars and the defense is always on the run. And, you know, just look at all the crap they did with Mike Flynn. I mean, it, it's not even that. It's, I mean, you got the local black kid and freaking – uh, Jackson, Mississippi, uh, where the prosecution, you know, they it's just the whole thing is just freaking the whole thing is, and I'm not saying it's corrupt because there's a hell of a lot more corruption going on, but you know, at the end of the day, they want to plead this kid out. The, the kid got no way to, to, to prove himself innocent, which of course he's not supposed to do to begin with. And the judge is just trying to shuffle these people through. It's freaking criminal, man. And uh, look what they did with that Alaska Senator, whatever his name was. I mean, the whole thing is, is Democrats, is Republicans, all, once again, the prosecution side, they love the idea of power. You know, they're starting to become little Napoleons, and I freaking can't stand it. So I go in there absolutely with the intention to uh, acquit, unless they can convince me otherwise. Holy crap, it sounds like innocent until proven guilty. Who knew? Crazy. Um, uh, Mary says her jury duty was canceled. Yeah, but you're in Connecticut. I'm in freaking Atlanta, and tomorrow's going to be 42 degrees and sunny. Uh, let's see. Hey, Phil Dietrich, Washington State. Um, just uh, talking about Washington State with my mom. Talked to my mom for the first time in about yeah, two years today. It's very, it's very illuminating. Um, man, when my mom is on, she is the best person in the world. When she's not on, she's not. It's just uh, I don't know if the 
acid she did or the drugs she did when she was young. For, I don't know. But when she's on, she's freaking awesome. When she's not, she's not. It's just sad, man. It's just sad to see and bipolar. It, the whole thing is just uh, it's just sad to see, you know, when whatever the disease is in someone's brains, um, it's, it's just tough. And uh, but anyway, I did not know my mom, my mom, when she was six, lived in Whidbey Island when my granddad was uh, in the Navy. I did not know that. Uh, Ross, right on, man. Let's see what's going on. PEI for our friend Ross, shall we? So PEI today is sunny and 65 degrees. No. Ooh, dude, 21 degrees. 21 degrees. Man, crazy. Uh, so Ross, most people taking the plant propagation course will want to be uh, pot growers. Yeah, I don't, I, I tell you, man, I think the pot stuff is way over, I think you know, all these politicians who are greedy saying we're going to legalize it to tax it, I think they're all fools. I, I don't think there's that many dope smokers. I don't. I mean, just because it's, it's the whole thing, it's my whole thing why I <laughs> legalize it all because just because it's legal doesn't make me say, you know, heroin's legal. I want to start shooting that crap up. No, 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 no. I mean, there's going to be some. I mean, you cannot deny if it's legal, there will be more people who partake. I get that. The vast majority of people will not, and it'll certainly, certainly reduce the cost and ineffectiveness of the law that cannot stop people from doing drugs, all there is to it. I think the plant propagation course is more for the, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, self-sufficient group of people. Um, the, we call them anarch-capitalists, anarcho-capitalists who are saying, I want to grow my own fruit, and I want to take a, a, a tree, an apple tree, and put it on the trunk of a pear tree, for instance. And uh in a, in, a, in a fruit farm, um, a fruit forest or food forest, like my man out in Florida, I forgot his name, but there's a guy who wrote the book, uh, The Florida Food Forest. I forgot his name. I, I think a lot of people are interested in, uh, at least in my people, I, I hate to say run with, because I don't really run with anybody, are interested in being self-sufficient, not relying on the on the grocery store to have the food. And they say, look, I'm going to store, you know, six months of gasoline. I'm going to have, you know, multi-powered uh, generators. Uh, I'm going to have, you know, a food forest. I'm going to have some food in storage. You know, I'm going to have my right to own firearms. Um, I'm going to try to reduce as much as I can the reliance on foreigners, be it Chinese or, you know, Mexicans or whatever, or Canadians to send goods to us, you know, buy overseas. I want to do it locally or in-house. I think it's great. I absolutely, I'm 100% on along those lines. Drive behind a day who a uh, guy who said he shops, he supports his local economy. And I see that all the time. You know, I wonder how true that is, frankly. Um, I don't know. Uh, I always kind of chuckle. Same kind when I see those coexist bumper stickers. You know, those people are the biggest libs out there. Out there. They don't want to coexist with us. I guarantee if you pulled up in a truck with a Trump bumper sticker next to a coexist guy, the coexist guy is like, ah, ah, he'd run for cover. He couldn't, you gotta shield my eyes. Ah. But at the end of the day, there is a group of right-leaning people. Um, I hate to even say libertarian because that makes it like the capital L. But just, you know, people just want to be left the hell alone. And, uh, and I think there's a lot of people that are mindset that uh, took some of the best of the hippies and maybe some of the best of the capitalists and combined it to say, we want to be more self-sufficient. We want to trade with each other and not in a... Uh, in a, in a, uh, where, where I got to bring firewood to you to get a cow, nothing like that necessarily, but uh, a barter community, but just, you know, just being more at one with, with your community and being more at one with the earth. And that sounds hippie-ish and whatnot, but I, I think there's a lot of validity to that. And as a Christian, I follow my man out in Stanton, Virginia, uh, Joel Salatin. Uh, Joel's a radical libertarian and a radical Christian. And, uh, and he just says, look, God gave us his land. It's nuts not to take care of it, man. I mean, you got to take care of the land, which means take care of the soil, get rid of monoculture, try not to import goods from overseas if you can freaking grow them right here and trade with your neighbors. I'm 100% all about that. Now, at the end of the day, um, you know, I recognize the need that you're going to have to import stuff. I get all that which is why I don't have any qualm with, with fossil fuels, none whatsoever. Fossil fuels are good. We need them. Uh, if I could only show you my next T-shirt I just bought, you guys are going to love it. So remember, I got my I Love Fossil Fuels T-shirt. Guess what I got next, which I'll show with you next time. Oh, maybe I'll wear that shirt tomorrow. Yes. Yes. I'll wear this shirt that says I Love Fossil Fuels tomorrow down to the courthouse. Yes. They'll say, you don't need to come here. 
Uh, how do you, uh, my man Matt says, oh, by the way, Ross, if people, I, I, oh, I was going to say the whole thing about dope smoke and all this, but I get so much revenue from it. No, 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 you're not. We have lots of examples now in Colorado. These guys, they're producing so much product. There isn't enough demand for it. There's not. So the supply is growing and the demand is falling off a cliff. And what happens when supply grows and demand falls off a cliff? Anybody, anybody, Bueller, Bueller, supply goes through the roof. Demand, well, demand, I won't say falls off a cliff, demand levels, let's just put it that way. The prices go way down. Now, that might encourage people in a free market to say, huh, the price of dope is so cheap, maybe I'll go freaking you know, toke up some. I'm not doing it because I don't like it. I tried it when I was a kid. I, I did not like it at all. And there might be some, you know, young youngins that try that. And I'm not going to deny that dope might be a gateway drug to other things for sure. I just find it funny though. Everyone focuses on marijuana. I'm like, well, what the hell is alcohol? Alcohol is ever a gateway drug is alcohol. And yet no one's talking about that. It's just, anyway. all right. So Matt says, do you pull money for the month or an entire year of expenses? I just do it for the year, man. I say, hell, I know I need 50,000 bucks. Just cut me a check and put it in the account and be done with it. That way you can track it, man. I mean, if you, if you do it on a month to month, there's going to be months where you need more. And then you're like, oh, shoot, I need more. But if you do on the year, say, this is what I got. Unless something emergency happens, this is all I got. It just keeps you more honest, in my opinion. Uh, Deepak, Deepak, right on. That's a, uh, uh, Deepak. Uh, I plan on going 100% S&P 500, S&P until the end since I have a pension. Yeah, right on. Deepak says, I plan on going 100% in stocks because he has a pension. So, I Ben, do not argue with that in the least. I think that's actually a great idea, without question. Communist hippie movement. No, I, nothing to do with communists. Not like, yeah, look, man, the, the uh, no. New, no communist hippie movement at all. That's the thing with a communist. To uh, you know, what's the uh, to each according's ability, to each according's need, or something like that. Well, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, each has a huge need, and, he, and on top of that, each has less of an ability. Uh, now, screw that. Again, going back to Ayn Rand. No, 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 no. That's not what we want. We want an anarchist, uh, capitalist, where you can trade. And I see this is where the dialogue is. You know, the old liberals. You know, the old classical liberal I am 100% aligned with is the new liberal, new progressives. I mean, that's just evil stuff there. And the old stuff is fine, without question. But they took it over, man. They took over the term. They took over the term anarchist. And anarchist, and I'll never forget the first time I heard a, a professor of economics from New York University, Mario something, I forgot his name. He said he's an anarchist. So I was like, oh, what? You're and the way he's talking, I said, this doesn't sound like anarchy. I said, what are you talking about? And I remember just, I, said, I don't get it. And he says that the term anarchist has been so corrupted by the left, uh, by the uh, the tyrannical left, that it, it, unfortunately it's, it no longer means the same thing. What it meant before is you just live your life as you see fit and uh, without hurting other people. And I, and I said, this, this sucks, man. These guys, they, they take over the, the terminology. It's nuts. Uh, please let us know more about your course Day times and comments. So, Robert, the course is there's it's literally you just buy it, man. And, uh, and again, I'm waiting to hear a couple. My man Rob, um, who's who's my man, he said you know so far so good. So he he's he seemed fond of it. But I, I'm waiting for a couple more days for people to see it just to make sure that look, it's not the content I'm so worried about. I just want to make sure that you know I'm not picking my nose or I have boogers flying out or anything like that. It's something I missed. I watched that a lot. Um, believe it or not, though, after a while, I get bored of watching myself. So I'm sure I missed something where I was farting or something like that. And, you know, Pablo's taking a dump on my face. And I'm just like, I, I don't know. I, I, at some point, I missed something. I just want to make sure when some people watch it, and they don't have to watch the whole thing, that there wasn't something blatantly obvious I missed. And I'll, like I said, and I'll wait till about Wednesday, then I'll put it out. But then you just pay the money. You say, okay, here's the money. And you can watch it to your heart's content. You can download it. You can freaking do whatever you want. You can throw it up against a dartboard, however you want to do it. Um, it, this is more geared, just FYI, it's not, uh, my man, uh, Warren emailed me. That's not really his target or he's not my target. Um, this is geared towards, um, people who don't have what they think is enough to retire. And you know, I just threw a number out there, say 250,000 or less in retirement savings. And the reason I did that, cause I use two case studies. Well, three, if you count Wanda worker. So I got Wanda worker as a social security that we use her sample statements then I use Susie, a single Susie. So we bring back single Susie, everyone's favorite lady. 
Um, and she had, I think, 137000 in her retirement accounts when she was 62. And we show how she can retire, maybe not at 62, but maybe at 65, maybe at 66. In fact, I would argue that she probably could retire at 62 if but you got to watch the course. Um, and then we do case studies on Josh and Charlotte. And the same thing, I think I had them with a little bit more than single Susie. I think I had Josh and Charlotte with like 150 or something like that when they're 62. I had Josh and Charlotte, both are making 40000 a year, and their average index monthly earnings for both of them were, um, I can't remember off the top of my head, but they both made the same amount of money. So we use their AIME, then we dive into what their PIA was, and then we just start playing the numbers on, on how much uh, they need in retirement. So I said, they were making 80000 a year pre-retirement, and I said, they're going to have a $50,000 annual expenditure need. And then the interesting thing was I do not do the, the go, go, slow, go, no, go term where your, your money's falling off, your expenditures are falling. I did not do that. I did uh, increasing expenditure each and every year uh, simply because I think that's essentially the worst case scenario. I do not think people are going to spend, spend, spend like everyone seems to believe. Actually, that's getting less and less and less now. But but just for the sake of my sanity, I said, um, I'm just going to say that they're spending. So they need 50000 a year in this year. They're going to need 50000 51000 50 the next year, and so on and so on with inflation. So they have 80000 income pre-retirement. They have, I think, roughly 150000 in their 401k. They're going to need 50000 a year in, uh, to, to start at the age of 62, which means they need 55 at 66, I can't remember. But anyway... And that's how we do it. So we have this different case studies. Can Josh and Charlotte retire at 62? In that case, the answer is no, they can't. Um, and, and then we bring in reverse mortgages. I show how we add reverse mortgages. I use $10,000 a year for health insurance expense. What about health insurance? I'm using it. I use electric. I'm, I'm telling you, I do the whole thing. Because uh, my inclination is if they're spending 80000 if they have $80,000 of income before retirement, they're not going to be spending 50000 a year, but we'll go with that 66% or something like that, 66% uh, uh, replacement rate. I don't think that'll truly be what they need, but hey, that's what we're going to go with. So single Susie, she's making 50000 a year, and then we're going to have her needing 35000 a year at retirement, so basically 3000 a month. I don't think she'll need that much either. But we'll see. And so we're going to run these numbers to see what they can do and do all these case studies. Uh, talk a lot of estate planning. And this might not have anything to do with can I retire. But as always, estate planning is the redhead stepchild. And for you, my redheaded brothers and sisters, don't take that negatively. It just gets overlooked. And it can't. You need to get on the horse with your estate planning. It's the wrong answer not to have that up. So we talk a lot about estate planning, talk a lot about health care, a lot about long term care. A little bit about investments. I, you know, I give I've got bonds. I give about four or five lectures on investments, but a lot of case study stuff. Um, taxes, do a couple on taxes, and a lot of expenses stuff. So anyway, the course is going to be, you know, it's just you know plug and play. You can click click on it to your heart's content. You can buy it on your phone and listen to it in the car. Um, it's, 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 look, I hate to say it's wonderful. I don't know. You'll have to be, oh, I'm giving you a 30 day, uh, freaking, you know, you pay me if you don't like it, get your money back in 30 days. I don't really like doing that so much. Um, but, uh, at the, but I'm, I'm comfortable with that because I think, I don't know what the, I don't know what people are going to, you know, I just don't know. And if people think they didn't get their money out of it, then hell, get your money back. I don't care. Um, I don't do that when it comes to financial planning, the people I take on, because you, 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 you would have to give me back my time and you can't do that. So I don't give refunds on financial planning, even if people say that guy's a scumbag, because even if I'm a scumbag, I still spend hours on your stuff and I can't get that back. With a course, though, um, yeah, I will give refunds. You don't want it, you get your money back without question after thir at, within 30 days. And the reason for that is because I, my time is, is already sunk cost, if that makes sense. So. Oh, Mary had jury duty last month right on. Uh, why are annuities so hard to understand? <laughs> hmm. Yeah, um, that's a good question, Jerry. I was, read, I was listening to a guy talk about annuities. Yeah, I'm not going to find the. Uh, there's a guy at University of Illinois. He's a dean of economics, I think, of University of Illinois. And... Uh, the, the simplest annuity is an income annuity. It's literally you pay a hundred thousand bucks, you get 5,500 bucks. 
for the rest of your life and covered your spouse as well. I mean, that's literally a, an income annuity. Uh, but you start getting variable annuities or index universal life annuities. I just, I'm telling you, man, complexity is the enemy of financial planning. It really, really is. If you can't understand how, how many, 85% of the people sell those products, they don't know what the hell they're talking about. I'm just telling you right now. So um, fixed and good old fashioned fixed annuities are pretty easy. They're just like CDs. You say, I put a hundred thousand bucks in this fixed annuity with Transamerica. I come back and I collect 120,000 in five years. That, that's pretty simple. Income annuities. I put a hundred thousand bucks in, I get 5,500 bucks for as long as my wife and I are breathing. That's pretty simple. Anything more than that gets way, 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 way too complex. Um, the complexity allows them to throw more bells and whistles on there that sound good. Uh, when you really dive into it, you're like, yeah, it's kind of like the QLAX, man. I, I don't get why these economists are so big on the, the qualified longevity annuity con. I just don't see it. I'd love to be proven wrong, but I just, some guy pointed out when I was doing my initial video the other day, I said, I don't see it. He said, dude, you're even wronger than you, you're even righter than you think. Your numbers are wrong. It's worse than what you said. I said, damn, that's right. So I just, I don't, I don't get it, man. The complexity is what bothers me. Anything with complexity, that just means you're able to be taken for sure. And I don't like being taken. El Katrine's in the house. What's up, El? Uh, Sunny Florida. Send us some cool. <laughs> oh, man. Happy Thanksgiving, too. Man, let me tell you, yesterday, um, we had, my son had, so my one son had one child stay over the other night, two nights ago. Last night, Liam had two of his friends. Chloe had two of her friends. Maddie had a lady who's from Dubai stay here for the whole Thanksgiving weekend. So we had five friends plus my four crumb crunchers. That's nine kids. And the funny thing is this lady from Dubai comes from a, a very quiet family. And uh, it was just like, it was loud. It was awesome. Awesome. And uh, I said, uh, I'm not going to say her name, but I said, Hey kid, uh, lady from Dubai. Um, and she's great. I said, uh, you know, sorry, so loud for it. She goes, Oh, I love it. It's like, uh, you know, her house is so quiet or whatever it was. I said, Oh man, it's awesome. It's like, uh, it's just, uh, that's the old school way of, uh, of when you have a bigger family, we wouldn't have a big family, a bigger family is just loud. And you can't get away from it. It's just awesome. I love it. Did you know, it's actually interesting, a huge Indian population in Dubai. I did not know that she's Indian descent and a lot of Indians, not native Americans, but you know, real life Indians, they go to Dubai to do manual labor, like work in uh, factories, work, uh, um, you know, be, you know, caretakers, whatever. What's it called? Uh, au pairs or whatever. It's interesting. And uh, for the wealthier folks, I asked them, I said, do you speak Arabic? She goes, no, she speaks Hindu or whatever it is, because a lot of Indians go to Dubai uh, to get out of, you know, into the poverty in India. Uh, who knew? It's, it's, it's incredibly. I, I, do, I learned so much from talking to her. It's, uh, it's incredibly interesting for sure. So anyway. Uh, your thoughts on the bank failure videos over the past week or so bank failure videos. I, I haven't seen anything, Colleen. If you want to elaborate, I'd like to hear it. I, I don't know. Um, uh, yeah, I'm not sure. So I, I haven't seen anything that jumped out. Uh, no, the right spectator, the, uh, the left will never leave you alone. I mean, that's the problem. Look, if you want to be your own communist commune, like my mom and dad did when they went to New Mexico on the on, en route to Maine, freaking go crazy. But don't force me into this part of that crap. Oh my God, I don't care. Just don't force me into it. Uh, Reeds and all right. So my man, a dog and his boy. Uh, I heart fossil fuels. Me too, man. I love fossil fuels. Uh, where would we be without them? And yet the idiots, the idiots want to deny us our, our God-given right to have fossil fuels because they're so worried about carbon dioxide. It's just the whole thing is, I'm sitting there thinking, it's insane. It's in, I just, I, uh, oh, it drives me insane. I've, I was reading in Alberta, what was it? There's some law they're passing. It was in Alberta, I can't remember. I just, I said, this is, these people are freaking insane, man. I, I just, I don't understand it. Ah, all right. So what do I think about REITs and BDCs, business development corporations? Um, I had a guy who had a bunch of BDCs through Ed Jones and, and I looked at one and it looked okay. He had like six and it looked okay. I just, I don't know, man. I, I It seems to be that uh, they're paying significantly higher than market norm, which worries me, frankly. Uh, but I, I don't have much of a, I just, that, that 
my experience in those kind of things, and this is going to sound, well, you can't compare the two, but in floating rate bond funds. And I'll never, and I've said the story a billion times on Sunday, but I had a guy, a wholesaler who I liked come to my office when I was at Smith Barney, uh, you know, pushing, if people have CDs and they're maturing, they're not happy with their interest rates, you should look at floating rate bond funds. I said, what's a floating rate bond fund? He goes, well, they've been around for 10 years or something, and they've never had a down year and they paid more than whatever. So that sounds pretty good. And, you know, he showed that it looked pretty flat, you know, it's flat stability. I said, yeah, it looks pretty good. Yeah, I wouldn't put much money in there, but Hartford had a nice little piece as a trifold where you had floating rate bond funds, a Hartford, something else, the internet, I can't remember. So it was a good sales pitch going back to how you need to have good copywriting. Um, anyway, long story short, I was like, yeah, it looked pretty good. And then, it, it slowed, and then in 2007 and eight, floating rate funds were killed, killed. So I don't know what, the, I mean, BDCs look good in the up year. I don't know what it's going to happen in the down years. My inclination is to stay away from them just because I don't know how they're going to perform in down years. I mean, the reason they yield so much is uh, because there's something wrong with them inherently. I like REITs. I'm a fan of REITs, real estate investment trust. REITs should be in a Roth IRA for sure. I think having exposure to real estate on outside of just your home makes sense. Absolutely. And I think REITs are a great way to do it. I'm, I got no qualm with REITs whatsoever. Um, uh, JD is retiring in February at 56 and a half. <sighs> How awesome. Uh, Andrew Bova. Hey, Josh, any chance of doing an evaluation of Vanguard VBIAX compared to other funds for retirement income? Uh, as you, uh, I'm not sure what VBIAX is. So let's take a gander, shall we? Prince Edward Island is now down to 20 degrees and dropping. V Coeur d'Alene, I tell you, that looks pretty nice because Washington State looks freaking awesome. Mountains. But then I said, um, once you get on the other side of the mountains, it gets all deserty. And someone said, you should look at, you know, eastern Washington, northern Idaho. And I'll never move there because it's, it's too cold, but uh, imagine. But man, it looked freaking fantastic. Um, I just love looking at maps. I love looking at the real estate, you know, getting on the realtor.com and seeing what's out there is fun. All right. So let's take a look. VBIA, VBIAX. The Vanguard Balance Index Fund. Um, I mean, I man, I got no qualm with it. I just uh, five percent annual withdrawals. Yeah, I, I would default to a Well Wellington over that. I I, just, I don't know what it's, it's 50 fifty fifty. I'm not sure. I'm, I, but I would uh, my preference would be Wellington. I just uh, Wellington is just superb. And that's why I'm going to write a book solely on Wellington. Uh, but don't take that wrong, Andrew. I, just, I haven't done any research on the Vanguard Balance Index Fund other than it's, it's Vanguard funds can be cheap. It's got uh, index funds in there for sure. Pretty simple. Um, but I, I don't know much about it. But, you know, maybe I'll throw that in the, the list one time for sure. Uh, Tom says he retired last uh, May and he's taken advantage of the 40, uh, the post 54 because once you're 55 is works uh, 401k rule where you don't have to have, uh, get a penalty as long as you keep your money in said company's 401k and as long as you separate from service from said company you can't leave when you're 50 leave your money in your old employer's 401k and then at 55 start pulling out thinking it's going to be penalty free it doesn't work like that once you hit 55 and you're still that same employer and you leave, you can have access to that money as long as this remains there uh, without penalty. Still got to pay tax, yes, without penalty. Uh, what does a deadhead say when the pot runs out? This band sucks, man. Hey, man. <laughs> oh, man. All right, so sorry the course won't apply to me based on your 250K. Uh, says Deepak, um, and he laughs. Look, man, anyone can buy it. I'm not saying you can't buy it. I'm just saying at the end of the day, it's uh, it's geared. Uh, look, I mean, there's tons of stuff to learn in there. It's just it's geared towards that group of people who I uh, who I find get overlooked uh, in in financial planning. A lot of them may not have the money to uh, to talk to a financial planner, or uh, or frankly, the desire. Um, and, and I just find that that market sex, sex segment gets overlooked. And yet it's a vast segment. Nuts. All right. What's the best way to take distributions from a 401k uh, at age 70? If this is the same MGTOW, I haven't seen you around for a while, man. MGTOW. Um, 
That's uh, if MGTOW is this is MGTOW from Illinois. Okay, right on. All right, so it looks like MGTOW says Texas. So this is not the same MGTOW that we used to have. We used to have a guy named MGTOW who I liked. I haven't seen him around much, uh, but he was from Illinois. Unless my man MGTOW here moved to Texas. Um, MGTOW was the best way to take distributions from a 401k at age 70. The best way? I just, I just on an annual basis, I mean, one January, just call up your provider, just go on the internet and say, boom, boom, done, and be done with it for the year without question. Frankly, I would have my taxes withheld. Um, just to get, you have your taxes withheld, so you don't have to worry about it anymore. Usually, a default, I think, ten percent feds, five percent to the state. If you're in Texas, it won't be five percent to the state. But yeah, just be done with it. Just get it out. You got to, don't have to worry about it anymore. You just dump it in a savings account. Just make sure you don't spend it because it's there. Just you know, got to be a little bit disciplined. But for me, and what I've seen is, if people do it on a month to month to month basis, it's just it's it's too much. Just do it once and be done with it, and come back around the next January. Can you list all the different types of annuities? I feel like some types have two different names for the same thing. Yeah, well, we got the immediate and income annuities, Mike. Uh, those are the same exact thing. So they're literally, so it's SPIA, single premium immediate annuity or single premium income annuity or income annuity or immediate annuity, all the same thing. And all that means is an irrevocable decision. You're saying, I'm gonna turn over X amount of dollars to an insurance company and they're going to give me a monthly paycheck for as long as I am alive or I am in Charlotte or alive or a period certain. Um, and that's how it works. And so a, an immediate income annuity or a, a, a SPIA, you know, they're all synonymous. It's just literally you're saying, once I do that, though, there is no um, turning back. It's an irre irrevocable decision. You can't undo an income annuity. At least I imagine nowadays there's some provisions where you can for emergencies or something like that. But by and large, it's an irrevocable choice. So you got to be careful. But for what my recommending is always, if you're married, is a joint and life survivor annuity. A JLSA, joint and life survivor annuity. Um, which covers you and your spouse or anyone, but your spouse for as long as either of y'all are breathing. And then you add a 20 year period certain. I'm just telling you, run all the numbers. This is the best bang for your buck, unless something has drastically changed in the last couple of months. But every single time I've run these, it's always been the best bang for your buck. So Josh and Charlotte are covered because it's joint life uh, survivor annuity. Um, so as long as if I die tomorrow, she still gets it. If she lives until she's 150, she still gets it. If uh, we have a 20 year period certain, that means if I die tomorrow, she still gets it. But if she dies in year five, then our heirs get it from year five through year 20. So we know for a fact, someone will get a little bit more than what we put in. Usually in the interest rate environment we are now, it takes about 17, 17 and a half years to get your money back. But once you survive beyond 17 and a half years, it's just all profit at that point. So what you want to make sure is you want to make sure it's actually worth your time uh, to be without that money. So you want to make sure if you die, then your wife gets, if your wife dies, as long as she died before 20 years are up, uh, that somebody gets the residual. So it's a joint in life survivor annuity with 20 year period certain. I'm telling you, I've crunched these numbers every which way to Sunday, and that is by far and away the best bang for your buck. Then you got variable annuities. Um, yeah, I'm just not a big fan of variable annuities by and large. Um, I, I just, I, the, the fees are just freaking horrendous. Uh, but you get all these bells and whistles. Very, very few people ever exercise the bells and whistles. It's just, it's just not, I don't find it to be an attractive option. Um, you get indexed annuities. I'm definitely not a fan of index annuities. Again, the fees are just through the roof, man. Um, you're, buying, you're buying insurance protection uh, that most people never use. It's just all there is to it. Ah, that's not true, Josh. I have many clients who use it. Okay. Uh, but I, I can assure you, if they did not have those products, they would have been better off without question. The only time they would not have been better off was in 2008, but then we can make the same argument versus that stupid annuity versus having in bonds. I mean, versus having in CDs versus having cash. We can make these arguments till we're blue in the face. There's always an exception to every rule, but the generally speaking, if we have a, a high fee product and the reason it's high fee because it provides insurance protection, 
relative to a naked product that has no protection, the naked product in the, in at least the American form of capitalism has smoked all the other stuff that has given you the protection. And, you know, I mean, I'm telling you, I, I still like um, the Swan uh, defined risk portfolio um, because from 2000 to 2010, because it's a hedge, it literally hedges against the market. So when the market fell, um, it, it, it did great. It did great. It smoked the S&P 500 from 2000 to 2010. But that is the exception of the rule. It just really is. Since 2010, it's gotten smoked because a hedge is an insurance. And insurance, when the markets are going up, as they do more than often than not, uh, the insurance product is a, is a lag. And those lags compound, 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 year over year over year. So anyone can make their insurance products, be it a hedge portfolio, a hedge fund, a, a, an annuity of some sort, look great in 2000, the, the first decade, the odds. But that's not the that's not par for the course. Par for the course is not the odds. It's just not. And so we have 2000, 2001 and two. We have uh, 2007, October to March 2009. We have what 1987. The, actually, 1987, the market finished up. Uh, we have 94, maybe. And bonds, I can't remember what stocks did. I think stocks did okay in 94. 99 bonds, uh, they did poorly. But not when I say poorly, not even that bad. And then we have to go back to 1973 and 74 to have any significant sell-off. So, I mean, over, the la over my life, we've had uh, two pretty significant bear, no, we had three pretty significant bear marks. I was born in 1970. So, 73, 74. 2000 to 2000, basically until March of 2003, and then October 2007 uh, to March 9th, 2009. Uh, you know, so almost 50 years we've had those pretty significant bear markets. But I mean, you just can't hold a candle to what you would have been if you just been naked the market. What I mean, naked, I mean short. It just means no insurance protection. So I, I'm just not a fan. Now I get it that if you're retired, you have op you got to be worried. Well, that's why you do the barbell approach. Like going back to what Sergio said, you have five years of cash or three years of cash or whatever, and then you have equities. I mean, just market goes up, pull your cash you need. I mean, the, so if the market goes up, you take your portfolio, sell your gains and spend it to live on. The market goes down, you, you don't touch that, you take it from your cash and just you play them against each other. It's great. And again, if you have a pension and social security, you look at both of those as, as bonds. And so you have that third bucket filled with your pension and social security. But I, I just going back to simplicity, cash and stocks. Cash goes, uh, uh, stocks go up, I'm pulling the gains. Stocks go down, I'm pulling from the cash. I'm just doing that one, just, you know, it's like milking a cow. I've never milked a cow, but imagine it's like that. Uh, Jody, K. Paso. Let's see. Tom says, MGTOW, I would make sure you take out more than what the IRS requires with RMDs. Um, but I haven't looked. Yeah, no, I completely agree. So my man, I think MGTOW is saying, how do you do it when you hit 70? Um, yeah, 100%. Tom says, just make sure you take out more than what's required. At least as at least take out what your RMD is required for sure. If I had a million dollars in an IRA, how would I invest it if I was 60 years old? Um, <laughs> man, I, Jody, I don't know. I, I need to know more. Uh, I, I just don't know. I need to know more as I, I wish I could be, I hate to be facetious. What's the word I look for uh, to, to offset that, but I need to know, you know, every, there's so many more things going on to, to be able to say that for sure. Uh, my man, Leon says he loves listening to me. I learn something new every time. Right on. Hey, Terry from New Zealand, right on New Zealand. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Had a guy in here from uh, Ireland. We had a guy in here, a uh, flower grower Smith was from Australia one time. Someone from Brazil, I think, was on here. It's all good. But, you know, I am an American nationalist. And so, and then my man, Ross, from Canada. So I love America. And I'll never apologize for that. And by the way, I love Thanksgiving. I got no apologies. America is great. And uh, a stupid New York Times 1619 piece, they can kiss my butt. Have you read the stupid guy who's the author of that? He's a freaking commie. He's a pro-Soviet commie. Oh, I just, the, what, the, what the hell has happened to the media? It's nuts. Do they think that this is, no one's going to know this? Or do they think just people are so damn ignorant not to care? But anyway, screw all that stuff. Freaking the idea that the Europeans were the only 
bastion of slavery. We're the ones who ended it and fought a freaking war where hundreds of thousands of whites died to free slaves. That should, never should have been a slave. 100% agree with that. 100% love Harriet Tru Tubman and wish she was on the $20 bill. I think Trump should put her on the $20 bill. Would love that. 100%. It was wrong to have slaves without question. But America is so good, we got rid of them by the murder of freaking 500,000 people in a civil war. Just regular working freaking folks. And if they were drafted, just freaking farming their goods one time, and then they got drafted to fight the war for freaking the rich slave owners who can all kiss my butt, those cavaliers. I'll never forget my mom. This is how I love my mom. She's nuts. But she always did not like Thomas Jefferson. She was always anti john I said, how can you be anti-Thomas? I don't get it. She goes, because he was always a rich kid who, uh, who was big on you know, you know, the, the, the Cavaliers, the Virginia Cavaliers. You see what I'm saying? And he didn't recognize the poor people, the poor whites in the South who were being decimated because of slavery. She didn't recognize that. He was always on the rich uh, landowner genteel type. Yeah, man, I tell you, man, that's, uh, there you go. Look, I love Thomas Jefferson. No, no qualms. George Mason, where I went to school, who also penned the Second Amendment. All right, George Mason penned the Second Amendment. I got no qualm with that. Those guys risked risk live and blood, the whole thing. I got no qualm. But it's always interesting to me that the, the, uh, the landowners of the South, who did not care about any poor white guy, all of a sudden drafted these white guys to go fight some stupid-ass war where, I, where they got maimed and then they didn't get freaking compensated. I just, the whole thing is nuts. They all kiss my butt. Anyway, so uh, in freaking stupid New York Times or 1619 thing, kiss my butt. My butt is big. Um, and getting bigger, how much Thanksgiving stuff I ate. And I love Thanksgiving. And you know, it was awesome, by the way, to have the lady from Dubai and we sat around the Thanksgiving table and said prayers. Now, look, she may or may not, I don't, it's up to her, but you want to introduce to people the, the wonderful life of being a Christian family, the happiness that you have, the peace that you feel, the love that you share. That's how you convert people. You don't convert people by gun to their head. You convert people by the joy you know as a Christian, and you want to share that joy. And you don't do it, let me bash you over the head with the Bible. You do that with smiles, and you do that with just, this is how we live because we know God's looking out for us. And when you know that, you got, I mean, I got worries. Hell, I worry all the time, but it, ta it takes a lot. People want to be part of people who are happy. That's why the Mormons are so good at what they do, because they're always freaking happy. All these Mormons running around was just happy as can be. You know what I'm saying? It's like people say, I like that. I want to join a place where I can be happy. That's how you promote Christianity. You don't promote it by, well, it's in the Bible. No, 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 no. That's not how you do it. You promote it with a, having a relationship with Jesus. And say, gee, I don't know, but Jesus knows. I trust that Jesus is going to take care of me, and that's all I need to know. But that's, you're, that's a crutch. You're damn right it's a crutch. I need a crutch. <laughs> you're goddamn right. And Jesus is it. And I'm cool with that. You don't need to know why Jesus did or who you, none of that stuff. You just need to know, tell me, did Jesus, was he lived? Did he live? Yes, we can all agree Jesus was lived. If you, and I always say to anyone who doubts that, I say, okay, so you're saying the Quran is a lie? Because Koran recognizes Jesus, all right? So, and no one on the left is going to sit there and say the Koran is a lie because they know they're scared. They're scared. It's easy to bash Christians, but they're not going to say the Koran is a lie because they would say that's a little bit too much. I'm willing to go after, you know, a baker in Colorado who won't give me a gay birthday cake, but I'm not going to go there. That's too far. So it's okay. So if Jesus didn't live, then the Koran's a lie, right? Nah, I'm not saying, okay. So let's agree that Jesus lived then. Did Jesus die? Well, if he lived inherently, he died. So the only thing it comes down to, was he rose, risen from the dead? And that's where the argument could be. I don't know. You don't know. No one knows. No one knows. But we have enough evidence to say, you know, there's a lot of things that support this. I'm pretty cool with that. I'm thinking that uh, I'm, I'm, I'm convinced because we'll never be able to prove it. And what always cracks me up, the Richard Dawkins of the world and the, uh, what's his name, Sam Harris, uh, who they know what happens to your body upon death. They know. No, they don't. They don't know any more than I know if you go to heaven. No one knows because no one has ever been there to come back and talk about it, except for what we believe, Lazarus, Jesus. But you don't have to believe it. But then you say, my faith says we just lay in the ground as compost. Well, okay, if that's faith, because you don't know either. That's what makes it great. It's okay. You just admit you don't know. But there's enough evidence for me to suggest that this stuff did happen. And if it did happen, uh, and I have a personal relationship with Jesus because he was spoken to me through the Holy Spirit, um, no, I'll go to my grave believing that. Now, the question is, I don't know how these guys do it, those Egyptians when the ISIS came around, um, not the Egyptians, the Iraqis, the Yazdis and stuff. I don't know how those people do it. 
I don't know how people sit there with a freaking the the Nazis, uh, the ISIS Nazis, and the these these Nazis coming around and saying uh, re, re, reform, reclaim, whatever, to disown your faith. I don't know how you do that, and they didn't. And I man, I got nothing. But I'm just, I sit there and I just like, whoa, that's nuts. That's nuts. That's uh, that's hardcore. I hope I hope I never have to be tested like that. But I don't think I don't know if I could do that because I don't like pain. I do not like pain. Pain hurts. Actually, I got bit by old Pablo. I don't know if you can see that. I was doing sit-ups, and he, Pablo, for some reason, when I do sit-ups, he loves to jump on my arm and bite me. Not, you know, just nip at me. Yeah, that dirty dog, as Norm McDonald would say. All right. Um, Nick Dad, this is a good one. When retiring at 55 and taking 401k, can you work another job? When retiring at 55, taking 401k, can you work another job? Okay, so you're retiring at 55 and you're keeping that money in your previous job. Can you take another? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, I see what you're saying. You just, you can't, you, so I'm retiring from freaking FedEx. I'm 55 years old, retiring from FedEx, but now I'm going to go work digging ditches for the county. Can I have access to that post-55 separation without being penalized? Yeah, absolutely, 100%. Absolutely, Nick, without question. Uh, oh, here we go. Good one. Oops. <laughs> another i'll do another course who can kiss my butt <laughs> um josh i left my company in 2015 at age 57 all right money is still in their 401k does that mean i have access to a penalty free absolutely absolutely well but you're it's more than penalty free now because you're above age 59 and a half anyway sassed so the question was he or she left his company at age 57 money is still in the 401k plan. Does that mean they still have access to a penalty free? Well, in this case, because old SAS is above the age of 59 and a half, the answer is unequivocally yes. But let's just say he or she was not under the age of 50, was under the age of 59 and a half, then the answer is still yes there because left their company at age 57, the money is still in that previous employer's plan without question. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there goes Tom. Look at Tom Major, man. Tom Major kicking butt, taking names. If there's a, is there a cap on R I B L I M? Is it high earned claims? I don't even know what R I B L I M is, man. David, is there a cap on rib limb? <laughs> Marie says, is the IRA Marie who said go Pittsburgh? Is the IRA conversation added to or conversion added to the gross income after deductions on? Uh, 1040. I want to convert to Roth, but I don't want to jump tax bracket single. All right. So is the IRA conversions added to gross income after deductions? I know. So basically what they're saying is if you look, I don't have, but if you look at your 1040, uh, it'll be, I, I want to say it's you know, uh, line uh, four or five, Marie. So you see your earned income, your taxable interest, your qualified dividends, four, I think might be IRA distributions and IRA distributions are Roth conversions. And then five is social security. So all that stuff gets added and then you take out your standard deductions. So it's, so that is part of your AGI. And will that throw you to a higher tax bracket? Sure. Absolutely. Just like any income could throw you to a higher tax bracket for sure. So the answer is it is part of your AGI. Absolutely. And then you take your standard deduction and that gives your taxable income. So the answer is yes. Uh, Jack just turned 59 and pumped that I and pumped that I can start converting my traditional to Roth. Uh, any updates on raising the RMDAs? Yeah, we just got to see what the Senate does. Um, not sure why you said you're pumped that you can start converting your traditional to Roth at 59. There's no you don't there's no penalty for doing Roth conversions if you're under the age of 59, folks. I, I actually get this question a lot more than I would have thought, and I probably need to address this specifically. I'm 49. If I have 100,000 in my IRA, I can absolutely convert that to my Roth today without penalty. I still got big tax on it, but it's just no penalty. A conversion is one of the, uh, the exclusions or the exceptions to the penalty of, uh, of premature distributions, if that makes sense. So you don't have to wait till you're 59 to start moving money from an IRA to a Roth, It'd just be advised. Uh, Sergio, my thoughts on differing uh, 100, 20, uh, deferring. Okay. So my thoughts on deferring 125K from your RMD for up to four. 
Yeah. So Sergio, one of the, the, one of the reasons the folks like the uh, QLAC is that you don't have to take your RMDs uh, until you're uh, 84, 85. And you can convert at most 125,000 or I think 25% of your IRAs and not your 401k is just your IRAs. Um, so you don't have to take RMDs on that amount. Um, but it, I don't know. I just, it, I mean, you have a hundred thousand dollars. Let's just say you got a hundred thousand bucks for simplicity and your RMD the first year is 27.4. You're going to have to take 3,700 bucks out. Right. But now because you put 25,000 into a QLAC, your RMD divided by 27.4 is still 2,700 bucks. I mean, it's a, it's a thousand dollars, not even a thousand. It's just, I don't think it's, I mean, I just don't think that's that huge of a deal. And all we're doing is deferring RMDs to a future occasion. Uh, it's still going to be required distribution. It still comes out as ordinary income um, and it's still going to be taxed. And most likely, pretty good chance you'll be dead and your wife will get it and get hammered. I, I just I just don't see the huge benefit of it. I, mean, I get the idea of, of deferring RMDs, but the RMDs on the front end are so low anyway, with 3.6%, 3.8%. I, I just don't think the RMDs in the front end of the uh, of of once you hit RMD age is that big of a deal. I think it's a back end, which is the whole point why I'd like to convince people to do more Roth conversions so that way they don't leave their surviving spouse with huge IRA distributions or their heirs with huge IRA distributions, especially going if we go to the Secure Act, where you know you're gonna have to get those accounts done uh, zeroed out within five to ten years of inheriting. That you know, that's just a freaking tax nightmare of untold proportion. It's just uh, I don't get the the whole thing with the Secure Act. I just I don't. It's not a big deal. I mean, they're writing Motley Fool and where is Yahoo Finance? This is the biggest retirement plan since the uh, Pension Protection Act of what 2005. It's just not that big of a deal. It's just not. I mean, small businesses can get together to offer 401k plan. What do you flip and do? Um, you, you can defer, uh, RMDs until you're 72. That's not a good thing. Cause you know, they're going to change the tables that, that don't do, we don't want you to defer an RMD. If we want you to take those because we want you to reduce the taxes that are coming down the pike in the future, you can re reduce RMDs or you defer RMDs till 72 under the secure act of the house passed. 401k plans can be uh, devised uh, among small businesses. They don't need it just, and I think they can allow annuities in them. I mean, okay. I mean, you still have access to a private. I, that's not that big of a deal. And then what's the other one that kind of, I didn't like. Oh, then the other one is that you freaking, you got to exhaust your inherited IRA, a non-spouse beneficiary within five to 10 years of receipt. None of these things are, that's a bad thing. Um, deferring RMDs is a bad thing. You know, everyone and their mom like, yeah, I have to take my RMDs out till I'm 72. Boom, you get hit by a truck and now you're 73 years old and your freaking RMDs are just, it's not, it's bad. Deferring RMDs is bad. Uh, zeroing out your inherited IRA to a non-spouse beneficiary is absolutely horrible. Uh, 401k plans that more and more small businesses can, and that's freaking no big deal. And what was the last, I forgot what the last one. Oh, annuities and 401k plans, just that old. Uh, just up from a night shift, says Terry from uh, New Zealand. Right on. All right. RMDs are based on the value of the account at midnight New Year's Day. Right on, uh, Mike. So what happened? It's December 31st. All right. So uh, on, uh, yeah, there you go. So 31 December, your account was worth 502000 bucks. Mike C. Divide that by 27.4. If you're just turning 70 and 70 half, 26.5, 25.6, and so on. Absolutely. Uh Yeah, so here's Tom. Leaving money into a 401k maybe costs you money and higher fees, depending on what the plan is with. Uh, you may want to look over to roll it to a standard IRA. I agree with that 100%. Yeah, I would imagine the fees would be very low in a 401k, but not all the time, not all the time. What are deferred accruals? Do you, they turn into income annuity in the future? Are they good to have? Deferred accruals. That sounds like on a municipal bond, Miranda. Um, I'm, I'm drawing a blank. The, on a municipal bond, if you didn't get the, uh, that sounds like a municipal bond. I don't know what, do, I, I don't know. Uh, defer to, but there's, I don't think that's the right verbiage. There's something on a municipal bond that you're buying the interest that hasn't been paid out yet. 
I think it's deferred accruals. It's just not a big deal. Um, anyway, the answer to your question, I, I don't know re regarding an income annuity, how that would affect it. So I'm not sure what deferred accruals are. Uh, Fidelity, that's where Tom Major has his money, as he let us know in no unspecific terms one time. <laughs> Just goofing on you, Tom. Uh, at, uh, more Mormon women take the most psychotic drugs than anyone else in the U.S., and that's well known. Yeah, exactly. How well it is, exactly. <laughs> David says... So MGTOW says more, more when women take psychotic drugs than anyone else that is well known. I did not know that. And I know quite a few Mormons. Now they might be hiding it. I highly suspect that's not the case, but uh, yeah, exactly. I, I agree with my man, David. Um, there you go. The specific IRS codes that covers this. There you go. 72T, the widow benefit limit. The R-I-B-L-I-M is the widow benefit limitation within i've never heard of the r-i-b-l-i-m so i'm not uh the widow benefit limitation i don't know what that is i've never heard of that um never heard of any of that so i'd have to you have to give me more give me a link or something i've literally never heard of a widow benefit limitation uh can the rule of 55 penalty free says john justice withdrawal be prohibited by the oh that's a good question that's a good question um, so John says, can the employer not allow the 55 penalty free withdrawal? So the, 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 it's not the employer who would penalize you anyway, though, John, it'd be the IRS. So the, the employer has no say on whether or not to allow the penalty. Now the employer might have a say on whether or not to allow the distribution. Um, that's the drawback about 401ks. I tell this to people all the time. Why should I roll it to an IRA? What's wrong with the 401k? Well, the, the employer because they're worried about being uh, held accountable for a mismanagement of the fund and being sued, essentially, uh, they're going to be more stringent by they can than the IRS allows. So when it comes like a durable power of attorney, for instance, the employer isn't going to just let someone show up and say, hey, I'm John Justice's wife. I got this durable power of attorney. I want access to the money. They're going to say, yeah, great. Take a line, sister. Um, so, the, I, so the employer could be more restrictive than the IRS allows. Now, whether or not they could be restrictive on your ability to withdraw, I don't know. I bet they probably could. So it, it has not to do with the penalty because that's an IRS rule, but it has to do with the employer allowing you access to money. Retirement insurance benefit limit. I, yeah, I don't know Don't know what the widow's retirement benefit limit would be. Never heard of it. Um, yeah, I don't know. Retirement insurance benefit limit. Never heard of it. Uh, Michelle says, Josh, sometimes answers the most simple question is so beneficial. Josh, sometimes answers to the most simple question is so, so beneficial. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not sure that's referencing, but uh, okay, understood. Um, oh, maybe the thing with the Roth, maybe that's what Michelle's talking about that. Um, you can't be, you can convert to a Roth under the age of 59 and a half. No, it's funny you said, Michelle, uh, it's funny you said that. I had a guy email me something today and, uh, it reminded me how, and please don't take this wrong, um, how not you, Michelle, but it reminded me to remember that there are a lot of people just don't know that much on financial planning. Um, and that sounds arrogant, sounds wrong, sounds patriot. I don't mean it like that. But um, there are a lot of people that literally haven't paid any attention until all of a sudden they're looking at retirement. Now they're like, holy crap. And I forgot what it was. The email was so, for me, elementary. I was, I was like, I, it was, uh, I forgot what it was. And, um, and I remember just kind of initially thinking, I it just, it's, it was when you've been in this business for so long, you assume everyone knows at least some, something of what you know. And that's a bad assumption to make. And, um, and I, you know, I still got to pull myself to that because, you know, I'm, I'm pretty well, what's the word I'm looking for? Well read in this business. I've been in it for a long, long time. You know, I have education credentials to go with it. Um, but uh, I, I, it's, it's good to remember that just because I know it doesn't mean other people know it and, and to bring it down. Um, and again, I don't mean to sound patronizing or arrogant, but I just, you know, for instance, for me, um, the idea that someone would not know that you can convert a Roth under the age of 59 and a half. It's like, really? But then I remember, it's like, man, how would you know until someone tells you that that makes sense? Like, let me give you an example. 
um, changing my freaking uh, the garage disposal, garbage disposal. You know, you get, a lot of people say, ah, it's easy to do. Well, it's easy to do if you've done it a million times. It's not easy to do if it's your first time. And I guarantee you, a guy, you know, a plumber can do it with a freaking blindfold on. I could, I took me for, I was like, dude, and I was like, ah, and I was getting ready to throw up my hands. And finally, I said, let me just try. And you know, I finally you know, get it. I could do it again easier next time. But it was, it was difficult for me because I never done it before. It's like anything you do new. You know, if you're a, a guy, you know, freaking digging ditches for the county, and now you're 58 and you got, you know, 300,000 in your T, in your four or three beer, whatever you got, your county plan. Now you're looking at retirement, you got a pension. You're like, I never even looked. I have no clue what's going on. Why would that guy know? So it's, it's good for me to actually, A, to do these live streams because I can see where uh, the people are watching and what their thought process is. But it just keeps me on an even keel, if that makes sense. And uh, and I hope never be so arrogant to come across as an arrogant prick. I don't want to be like that because I know what it's like to ask a question. And like, you didn't know that? But when I was in Honduras, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I grew up, we didn't have a TV for the first eight, nine, 10 years of my life. I think it was 10, maybe eight, something like that. Never had a TV, never had a microwave, never had a microwave oven. I grew up on an island in Maine. And when you picked up the phone, we still had a, a party line. And I want to get into what a party line was. But that's, you know, that's, you know, we just long story short, we did not, we didn't have a car. So anyway, when I was in the army, we're in Honduras. And I remember I was getting ready to put one of those old school popcorn things. I had the aluminum, you know what I'm talking about? Put that in the microwave to cook it. And uh, my squad leader, Sergeant Jackson said, what the hell are you doing, son? I was like, I'm going to cook this popcorn in the microwave. He goes, you don't put aluminum in the microwave. What the hell? I'd never used a microwave in my life, ever. I Literally, for me, it was completely new. I was like, you can't? Yeah, it was it was it was funny, and uh, anyway, it just it was it was funny. You know, hindsight, I was like, I don't know, but I mean, I remember thinking, you know, it's kind of upset. I was like, what? Don't yell! I didn't know. He goes, what? But he comes from a different place than I came from. It's uh, it's easy to overlook that we all come from different places. Anyway, uh, let's see here. Yeah, my man Ross has smashed the thumbs up. Much obliged, Ross. Look at our Canadian brothers from the north helping out the Americans. And great. Yay, Canada. Yay, Canada. Uh, clarification says Jack Shoemaker, I will pay using part of the money and converting to pay the tax. Wait, okay. So Jack says, yeah, okay, right on. All right, that's a good point. So Jack is going to do the conversions but he's going to pay the tax with money from the IRA, which is subject to tax, the penalty. Yeah, run 100% right, Jack. Okay. So he's converting 100000 from his IRA to his Roth, of which the portion of the taxes he's going to pay is from the IRA. But because he's before 59 and a half, that will be subject to penalty because it is a premature distribution. Wonderful observation, Jack. I very much appreciate you clarifying that. Uh, and yeah, my man from Illinois says he wants to defer RMD so we can complete the Roth conversion. All right, man, that's that's a good point. That's actually a good point. Um, ability to defer RMDs allows you more time to complete complete Roth conversions. That one hundred percent. I take some of what I said. I take it back. I still don't think the Secure Act's that big a deal. But um, David said I can see using QX and small premiums to get a raise every three years ago to counter inflation. Uh, put ten K to get. Eh, maybe um, the three bucket Troy a retirement plan. I, I love it. the three bucket plan. I mean, I, I used to preach that and I do seminars all up and down the East coast out to Pittsburgh, freaking down to where else we go freaking wherever Mississippi state is. Uh, I forgot what that town is Starksville, you know, up to Portland, Maine. We've been everywhere. And we, I used to talk about the three bucket plan all the time. I came to BOA, you know, Military Officers Association. If you guys are a member of BOA and you want a speaker, be happy to do it. I enjoy, I enjoyed that actually. Uh, MOA is always fun. Um, I actually had a MOA up in uh, up here. I spoke to like four or five MOAs in Georgia. I went to Mississippi, spoke of MOA, and we got to speak at the South Carolina Convention for MOAs, Military Officers. And I was not an officer, so they still let me in. Uh, Nikki Haley was there, the governor, and uh, the guy who said, you lied to, to Obama, Joe Wilson was there, and I got to speak, that was fun, and I was on the bill, so if you look up the South Carolina MOA convention, you'll see me with Nikki Haley, 
it was pretty cool. She didn't, I mean, I talked to her or anything, but I was, I was on the bill speaking to MOA state convention. That was fun. Greenville. That was a lot of fun. I enjoyed that immensely. But anyway, so we'd, I'd go over the three bucket approach, cash, bond, stocks, and you could just see people's eyes glazing over. It's, it's easy on paper, but in practicality and actual execution, the, the barbell approach is easier. It really is. I'm just telling you, man. So the three bucket says, I got some cash, I got bonds, and I got stocks. I take, you know, if I have, this is what I would do. Um, essentially, I'm pulling the interest off the bonds each and every year, funneling into the cash, pulling money from the cash. If a stocks go up, I'm pulling gains from the stocks to add to the bonds. You see what I'm saying? It's, choo, choo, choo. it's just, it's, it's too much. It's too much. And if I, you just see it. Finally, just say, screw that. I'm coming up with the two bell, the two bucket approach to barbell. So much easier to implement. Remember, confusion and complexity is the enemy of successful financial planning. The more confusing it gets, the less people are going to do it. Uh, Yeah, Mike C says he does not agree with converting 100% of traditional IRA to Roth. Better to leave a little bit for future charitable contributions. I got no qualm with that. None at all. Absolutely. Uh, Ian Fuel says he or she will be 65 in January. No, will that be too late to do Roth conversions? No, man, no. It's never too late to do Roth conversions. Here's a simple way to look at it. Will your taxes be higher or lower in the future? If they're going to be higher, and there's two things that are going for everybody, if they're married right now, they're, we know they're going to be higher. One is your spouse will die, leave you as a single taxpayer. Inherently, your tax rates will be higher. Two is the Trump tax bill will go away, uh, most likely. We don't know. If he gets reelected, which I think is pretty good odds he will, but should he get not reelected and some crazy loon gets over there and the Democrats take over the Senate? Because remember, Republicans got a lot of seats up for grabs now. And the Democrats are a motivated bunch. And if the Republicans lose the Senate, which I could easily see it happen. That's what happened to Reagan in 82. Now, Trump set history upside down in 2018. So everyone's like, 2018 was an anti-Trump. No, hell no, it wasn't. He took out Ben Nelson. Ben Nelson. He took out McCaskill. I mean, he took out some, some no one has ever done that before in terms of they took out four seating incumbent senators. From ben Nelson in Florida, they took out four seated incumbent senators. That has never happened, at least my understanding, for the incumbent party. It was nuts. That has never happened. Uh, he almost got Tester. He didn't get him, but he got, uh, what's his name? He got the guy in Indiana. He got McCaskill. He got uh, Ben Nelson. And there's another one I'm drawing a blank on. But anyway, he took him out. And he so they ended up with a net win of two because they did lose two. That's that was historical. So, but at the end of the day, 2020 is coming up, and I think that's going to be a tough one for sure. So if he loses, if Trump wins, uh, he could easily lose the Senate. It will be interesting to see if, if the Republicans get the House back. I'm not so convinced that's going to happen, actually. So I don't expect that to happen because re redistricting and whatnot. But at the end of the day, uh, even if he wins the House, even if he wins the presidency, uh, he, you know, will, will a Democratic Senate majority work with Trump uh, for sunset provisions on the tax law. I don't know. I don't think so. And then on top of that, it, it's still, he still could lose a presidency and then that tax law is gone and we'll have middle class tax increases for sure. So anyway, at the end of the day, if you're sing single, all right, then you, you don't have the thing with married filing jointly with the content. You just got to worry about your, your income now versus your income in the future. And if your income in the future is higher than it is today, that means your taxes will be higher in the future. So start doing Roth conversions. Absolutely. But it might be the other way around. You might have lower income in the future because maybe you don't work. I mean, who knows? So you just got to, it's never too late. It's never too late. It just really depends on what your future tax rates are going to be. And there's two strikes for married couples to think their future tax rates will be higher than they are today. Um, Three things that wall up social seniors, financial planning, Medicare, and social security. They are nightmares. Yeah. And the financial planning industry just makes it more so. Your brain surgery is easy if you know what you're doing. Yeah. And rocket scientists are too. All right. Uh, let's see. Yeah, there's Kathy. Kathy had asked a question on the channel today I saw. And I forgot what it was. It was a good question. Someone, I think my man Sergio jumped in, but Kathy, if you want to repeat your question, because I thought that a lot of other people would be interested in what you had asked. Uh, future President Haley, we shall see. 
Yeah, I kind of agree. I, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I like Nikki Haley. I'm not sure I like her as a president. Let's put it that way. Um, I mean, I vote for her over freaking whoever the other crazies are, but uh, I think Haley reads the tea leaves and follows the tea leaves. And, uh, and I don't like that. Republicans do that enough. I, you know, look, I might be, you know, like, I mean, my voice is just one out there, but I just wish that Republicans, instead of following the tea leaves, would actually set, I mean, this will be AOC, hate her as much as you want, but she is out there proposing stuff that no Democrat had the guts to do. And it set the tone a little bit. Now it's nuts, don't get me wrong, but you know, it's it's changed the dynamics of you know where all it takes is one election and, and AOC is a kingmaker. Really it is. Now, if they get hammered, then she's gone. I mean, I get that, but you know, that's the risk of politics, man. I mean, if you want to change things, you gotta throw out there and say we the carbon tax, that's what it was. Justin Trudeau, he ran on a carbon tax. Canadians insanely voted for it, and they it's it's nuts stupid uh but you know he laid it down he said this is you know because justin trudeau is a squishy idiot but still he knew where the, where the tea leaves lay he said we're gonna throw a carbon tax out there vote for it it's dumb it's dumb but they voted for it and that helped him get over the finish line bruised but he still got over the finish line if aoc she throws out a green new deal and if uh a Green New Deal, if her side wins, then she will be looking like a kingmaker. And all of a sudden now we're facing with more worse than a carbon tax. If she loses, well, you know, she goes the ash heap of history with other polit 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 uh, politicians. But at the end of the day, she went down swinging. A lady like Nikki Haley says, hmm, shh, oh, yeah, all of a sudden people don't like Trump. I don't like Trump. So we're going to ban freaking what the Confederate Memorial or something like that. Stupid. Oh, now some people do like Trump. So I'm going to jump on the Trump bandwagon. And it's, uh, it's leading from behind. I can't do that. Paul Brown, who owns the Cleveland Browns, says, or the Cincinnati Bengals, right? Say, Josh, I retire in one year and undecided if I should take a lump sum and roll over, but unsure how the market will affect my money. Yeah, that's <laughs> welcome to the club, brother. It's a tough one. Hey, this is Jerry. Right on. Jerry. Appreciate you being here, man. Uh, Josh, I know you don't time the market. What triggers you to do a reallocation from equities to bond cash to money market? I, I don't have any uh, bonds. I just have uh, stocks uh, and cash. Uh, and cash is just, I, I try to build up a portfolio, Jerry, of cash big enough that I don't ever have to touch my stocks. And I'm not there yet, but you know, hopefully with you guys buying my course, you'll get me there. Did I tell you my course is on sale? <laughs> But anyway, I, do, I don't have any bonds. I, I would say at the end of the day, just once a year, when you're taking out your distributions from your accounts to pay the bills, say, where's my portfolio? And you don't rebound. So you just say, what's up? Pull it from that. What's down? Don't touch that. Just literally, I mean, I tell you, it's the simplest thing in the world, which makes it so great because you're saying, I started with 100,000 in both accounts. This went up to 104. This went up to 120. I need 40,000 to live on. Let me take 40,000 off that 120. If that makes sense. Now that's down to 80. This is 104. Next year, this is up to 100. This is up 108. I need 40,000 to live on this. I mean, obviously, I'm using a pretty significant amount here, but let me pull it from this. So just, you know, take it from whatever's doing well and be done with it. So I think uh, keep it simple, stupid, man. Keep it simple, stupid. I'm telling you, uh, kiss. Uh, my buddy uh, got a job in a restaurant. He was asked to put some frozen OJ concentrate in the microwave to thaw it. Uh, terminated. He put the can in the microwave, started a fire, terminated on his first day. Oh, man. Yeah, me too, Rick. That's sad for your buddy. He, I guarantee he didn't know. And they're like, you're stupid. Well, he's stupid to the point that he doesn't know. I mean, that's it's being, if you're ignorant, that means you don't know. That doesn't mean you're stupid. It just means you don't know. It's okay. All right. Uh, Gary, there we go. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. That's what it was. Thanks, Kathy. So, uh, Kathy says, question of CD. Oh, that's what it was. So, Kathy was going to hire or her current guy was going to charge her 1% uh, advisor fee plus 35 basis points on top of that. And Kathy, I appreciate you letting us talk about your situation here. Um, and then she want to know if the advisor would throw the CDs and fix annuities into that mix. And I said, if he does freaking kick that guy to the curb and get the hell out of Dodge, that's all there is to it. Um, I just, no way. And I don't think he would, Kathy. I, I don't think his compliance would allow him to do that. 
Now, when you throw fixed annuities in there, I, I don't, I don't know how you can do that. I don't know how you can because a new any insurance contract in this day and age, uh, until I mean, at least as of the recently, I mean, I'm talking, you know, I've looked at it a couple months ago, it's still all sold by commissions or or by a, uh, a mutual company like a TIA Craft or USA. So if it's an annuity product, it's an insurance product. Thus, he's getting commission. No way he's getting fees on top of commissions. I mean, if he, I mean. <laughs> no way that's just i don't know if that's even legal so i say no the annuities and the cds won't be part of his asset mix what he'll do though is he'll sell you stuff to generate commissions to offset the fact he's not getting fees on that if that makes sense and i don't even call them commissions it doesn't bother me the way it bothers other people i actually would prefer commissions over annuity over our fees any day of the week uh, 1.35 is too much it's way too much of fees to pay without question way too much I tell him, look, if you like the guy and you trust him, you think he knows what the hell he's doing, I say, yeah, that's too high. Uh, I want you to lower my fees. And if he says, I'm not going to do it, I said, walk out the door. So, okay. I guarantee you'll find my man Dustin over at Jazz Wealth. Uh, I can't remember what his fees are, but they're significantly lower than this guy's. And he'll do you right, D Dustin. I mean, he's a good guy. You know, I, I don't get paid to recommend him, but I like Dustin Tibbetts over at Jazz Wealth. And he's got videos uh, that uh, he's my YouTube mentor, a huge fan of. And again, I, I don't know. I've met him. We did a I went down to Florida. We did a joint video together. Huge fan of Dustin. Um, you know, will you be satisfied? I have no idea. Uh, but there's no way to pay 1.35. No. And that's just no way. And if he throws CDs in there, no, that's nuts. That's not So don't do that. Uh, Republicans don't have the backbone. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Democrats have always had the backbone. Republicans don't. Uh, would you stay 100% stocks even at age 80? Yeah, well, it depends, Mike. I mean, if I need money to live on uh, from my portfolio, I'm going to do the barbell. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's that simple. How much do I need to live on? If I let's just say I have 100,000 bucks, I need 10,000 dollars a year to live on. I'm carving 30,000 from this 100,000, put in this account here. So now I got 70,000 in stocks and 30,000 in CDs or cash. You know, fast forward three years, and now this 70,000 is. I don't know, it might be down to 50, might be up to 100, I don't know. But at that point, I'm doing the same thing. So every, you know, every couple of years, I'm just selling it to replenish that, that three-year cash bucket. I just think you have three-year cash, you'll be fine, by and large. The vast, 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 vast majority of times, you'll be fine. You know, a couple of times, 73 and 74, you know, that, that would have hurt you a little bit because it, it fell so fast and so furiously that you probably needed five years of cash for this not to be tapped into too soon. Um, but the vast majority of time, it, it just, you know, it's, if you've had three years cash, you're just fine. So the stocks go down, they come back up by the time the three years expires. And that, that just, that seems to work just fine. Um, but, you know, the whole point is not having a mortgage. I mean, that's ultimately what it comes down to. If you don't have a mortgage, you can take a reverse mortgage. You can sell your house. You can downside. You can take a renter. You can do all kinds of stuff. It's the mortgage is the biggest expense. So not having a mortgage, I just tell you, man, not having a mortgage is the big way to avoid sudden shocks in your portfolio because you don't need to take a significant amount of money out. If you don't, everything flows on not having a mortgage. I was listening to a Morningstar lady today uh, talking about paying off a mortgage versus not. And thankfully, she was big uh, as a uh, podcast. I'm not sure if I still have it here. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, but she was, I'm trying to see if I can't find it. Yes. Yeah, oh, by the way, is this guy, Jeffrey Brown, uh, saving for retirement, only half the puzzle. And this is the, uh, see that Jeffrey Brown saving for retirement, only half the puzzle. The long view is at Morningstar, um uh, podcast. And I like that. That was a guy from, uh, from university of Illinois. Very interesting take. Oh, if you like fractals, Bedois Mendelbrot, there's Stuff You Should Know podcast, fractals. Love the Bill Burr podcast, the Dennis Miller podcast I listen to, and James Altucher. Some of his stuff's pretty good. Um, not all the time. Um, anyway, so, oh, the lady was talking about not paying off a mortgage. I, I could not agree with her more. Her whole point was about cash flow. Is the cash flow. Forget the interest rate. Forget what you can get in the market. Cash flow. Cash flow is king. And if you don't have a mortgage, your cash flow is inherently stronger. It's just, it's literally that simple. So, uh, my, my company added a Roth 401k. Should I switch all future contributions to it? I'll take a 
5% hit from Connecticut, but I'm doing this plan on relocating to a no tax state for retirement. I, I, man, I just, again, it really depends, John. And I mean, if you're making 250,000 a year right now, and you're only gonna be making 60,000 with a pension, social security and retirement, then I would not, I absolutely would not. If you're basically breaking even, I would, but it just really depends on the future tax. And the one thing against you doing that is just like you said, getting out of Connecticut. Um, get out of Connecticut to a you know low tax, Georgia, Tennessee, no tax in Georgia. Georgia has no income tax if you're over 65 on your first $65,000 of income per social security number. But if you sell your house, look at Mary, Mary Hampton on here. She's a Connecticut realtor. So when you're ready to sell your house, contact old Mary. She'll get you situated. She lives in what Westport, I think is what it's called. I have no idea where you are, but uh, man, Connecticut is such a beautiful state. Why they freaking, I just, oh, property taxes are insane. Um, I just think John just comes back to what your pension, what your uh, your tax rates in the future is going to be. It really is that simple. So you know you have one reason not to do Roth because you're going to pay five percent of Connecticut that you won't pay once you get down to the South or New Hampshire. All right. Well, I guess that's it. I'll show you real quick. I'm going to show you my uh, my course thing here real quick. Uh, so we're going to go to uh, uh, teach. Oh wait, wait one second. It was. And stop, stop doing that. Okay, it's a uh, uh, retirement planning school, uh, teachable. Oh, I think. No. Yeah. All right, here we go. So I'm going to come back here. I'm going to show you my course. I'm going to go share. There we go. All right, so here is my course. It's retirementplanningschool.teachable.com. And you see those, you know, grandma, I guess, with a baby or a young, young girl on the beach. It's always a beach, right? And there is no retirement crisis. And you can read all this. And this course, I'll show you, yes, you can retire and how to do it. And we got all these courses. Here's the curriculum. You can preview no rule of thumb. You can preview that for free. You can preview the two-step process to understand your taxes of retirement. You can see how Josh and Charlotte can retire with only 238,000. Uh, how Susie, Su single Susie can retire when we use the software. Uh, single Susie, various uh, retirement scenarios, 18 minutes of pure excitement. Reverse mortgage tor tor uh, tutorials, reverse mortgage pros and cons, I think, uh, somebody asked a question about lump sum or pension. Forgot who it was. Got a video on that. Investing, bonds, future investment return, estate planning, the living trust, uh, asset locations, a preview, what you need to do to retire, what you need to do part two. And then we got on top of that, your expenses, uh, top five expenses for retirees, property taxes, housing costs, Medicare expenses, the true cost of healthcare and retirement, utility costs, expensive breakdown, Lots of social security stuff. So that is the uh, school right there. Can I retire? Let's find out. And I think you, uh, you scroll down and there's a picture of your old buddy, Josh. And there I am. There's no time to waste. No time to waste. How do you know? Because I just said no time to waste. And then you got the uh, introduction right here with me pointing my finger at you with my, uh, I mean, that look, man, it doesn't get more professional than I did buy some new lighting. So now it's not just this up there. I got some other lighting, which actually looks a bit better, I think. I just bought that about a month ago. So it looks good. It's not perfect. Uh, retirement planning school. This is pretty cool. So, you, I mean, literally, I, it wasn't easy to figure out, but then you click here to get started. And what will happen here, hopefully, is we'll have a coupon code. And again, there's a dad and his grandkid at the beach. And you add your coupon code, which, uh, again, I'll share with you uh if you're a subscribe star person you know what the coupon code is if you're not you can type in half off and that will be ready to rock and roll if you want to do it beforehand that's fine i just uh again i'm i'm not quite sure it's quite, i think it's ready to go. i just uh i'm waiting to hear some uh feedback from the folks who bought it already but uh, half off is the coupon code until the end of the year literally half off no space is half off it'll be 250 bucks 
And if you're a subscribe star person, uh, you'll get a coupon code once you sign up and they'll be down here to a hundred bucks. And then we take uh, credit cards and that's it, man. That's the, uh, I mean, that's just a 30 day money back guarantee. If you're unhappy, we'll give you your money back within 30 days of purchase. Uh, I'll give you, yeah. And again, if you, if you go through this, you see some typos or something like that, let me know. Um, I got my resource page on, uh, what do I do here? I got Let's just put it. I, I keep doing that. I don't mean to do that. I want to. Uh, I'm a. I'm actually happy with this. I'm. Uh, I'm very happy with the net result, the ending result. And if I can go back to, all right, hold on a second. I'm not going to share. I'm going to show you because this will be where I have all my courses. Oops. Let me stop sharing. Uh, hold on just a second. Okay. Let's see. Oh man. Hmm. Yeah, well, anyway, I have a, so what happens with, um, with these, with these courses, and if you were thinking about doing it, which you should, um, what happens is they give you a school. All right. And then under the school, you have individual courses, if that makes sense. So, you know, my retirement planning school is my school. And then I have this one is actually, can I retire course? And then I'll have Roth conversion course. And, yeah, uh, social security course I'll do. And then um, I had another one I was wanting to do too. I forgot. But anyway, I'll tell him I had a camera. Remember. Um, but anyway, it'll be, oh, one guy, my man, uh, Shan said you should do a course for um, uh, people with kids in college or something like that. I, that doesn't interest me all that much. So I don't think I will do that one uh, just because I'm, I'm not that motivated by it. And if I'm not that motivated by it, it kind of bores me. Um, but the Roth conversion one, I can't remember. There's something else I was going to do too. But anyway, so you have like this, you, you know, you got your one school and then you got a course, you got a course, you got a course. So if you're going to do a teachable thing, it was freaking awesome, man. Just make sure you understand that you start with a school and then you define the course. I actually started with a course and I was having a hard time figuring out what was what, but now I finally figured it out, but that's it, my friend. So I guess, uh, <laughs> uh, my man says, uh, yeah, you want you now. Exactly uh dana good luck with that snow we're not uh, i'll tell you if i'm sitting in jury duty tomorrow uh pablo says good night and uh all right there we go 250 bucks a smoking hot bargain says uh sass yeah well i we shall see i think it is but you know at the end of the day it's uh it's you can try it if you don't like get your money back so all right, my friends, we will see you manana. Don't forget, I think Amar and I will be jumping on live on Wednesday at noon. Amar um, Shaw out of California. Got a mosquito bug right there. Freaking hate mosquitoes. Damn, dude. Um, got West Nile virus probably. Uh, what else is going on? And then, uh, oh, if you haven't done your Roth conversions, you got till 31 December. Get on that, like white on rice like white on rice or like stink on poop if you ever in the military. And we didn't say poop, by the way, but you got to be doing your Roth IRA conversions by the end of this year for sure. And uh, we'll see you guys uh, later. Hey, thanks for being, I really appreciate it. It's uh, I love doing it. And I love y'all being here and thanks. We'll see you in jury duty. Thanks now. Go Pats.